My name is Deb Tucker. I'm going to talk to you today in this uh, video demonstration about my newest tool called Rapid Fire Lemoyne Star. Now, for those of you who aren't familiar, the Lemoyne Star is a block that looks like this. They are blocks that are created with diamonds. Usually, when you see instructions for making this block, you're going to see instructions for cutting a template. You're going to see instructions for cutting squares, cutting triangles and actually doing Y seams at the corners of each one of those equilateral diamonds that you put together to create this block. With my technique, there are no templates. You're going to be rotary cutting. You're going to be strip piecing. You're going to be making your units a little bit bigger than they need to be and then trimming each one down before you construct. And whether you can see it or not on the blocks here, there's a little bit of extra also built in so that once your block is completely finished, you're going to have some extra fabric to be able to trim each block to a very precise size. So what I'd like to do is get started teach you how to use my system, teach you how to use my tool, and have you all making your own Lemoyne stars. The first thing you'll do, like most situations, is to determine what size block you want to actually make. The tool makes 10 different sizes, from 3 inch little Lemoyne stars to quite large 12 inch Lemoyne stars. I'm gonna, I've decided I'm going to make a 6 inch for this sample. Once I've decided I make that size block, I'm going to go to the chart that comes along with the rulers and I'm going to cut some strips. The strips are going to be labeled as background strips and they're going to be labeled as star strips. Now, they can be the same fabrics, they can be different fabrics. For my demonstration, I've actually chosen two different background strips and I've actually chosen two different star point strips. It may help you to keep things organized as you follow through on the video. After I've cut the strips, the prescribed sizes, I'm going to take the two background strips. I'm going to go to a table, a surface of some sort, lay the two strips side by side, and I'm going to mark a couple things on them. With the two strips, what I'm going to put are a couple of marks on the strips. I'm going to put A top. I'm going to actually write it on the strip, B top, and I'm going to put a mark down on the strips that's going to be down as far as the strip is wide. So if your strip is three inches, you're going to come down three inches. Four and a quarter, you're going to come down four and a quarter. And put a mark here and a mark here. When you're done with that step, you can kind of see where we're headed. This is what it's going to look like. I've marked my A top, my B top. I put a mark here. Those marks are my indicators for where I'm going to position my diamond strips or my star strips. I'm going to put the strips on there and I'm going to proceed to stitch using a good quarter of an inch the whole length of the strips. Once I'm done, I'm going to take these strips to my ironing board and I'm going to press them. The instructions are in the step-by-steps -steps that came with your ruler. Both of the seams, both this seam and this seam, are going to be pressed in the same direction. So when I look at the B, I'm going to simply be pressing the seam going toward, oh, I have a helper. It's about time one of them finally showed up to help me do my quilts, but I'm going to move him down. This is uh, one, of our, one of my traditional helpers. This is Buster. Let's move him out of the way and we'll get back to work. Don't you have helpers at your house? I always have helpers. But with the B piece, what you'll notice is I'm going to take the B and press the seam so that the seam is going toward the diamond strip. With the A piece, I'm going to be pressing the seam toward the background. So that is actually going to be going like this with the seam being pressed in this direction. Once you've cut the strips, you've stitched them, and you've pressed them, your prep work is done and you're ready to head to your cutting mat to begin to cut your specific units. Now that your prep work is done, your strips are cut, your strips are pieced, your strips are pressed, we're going to head back to the cutting mat. We're going to take the strips and we're going to layer them right sides together. They're going to be different depending on how, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. So let's talk about right-handed first and then I'll show you how it's slightly different if you're cutting and you happen to be left-handed. If you're right-handed, you're going to take the strips you're going to put the B strip on the bottom. The, the diamond, the, the colored 
strip is closest to you. You're going to put the A strip on top of it and you're going to take time to nest the seams together. If you've pressed correctly, they're going to nest beautifully for you. Once you've laid the strips out, what you're going to do is proceed to make a 45 degree angle cut. That's one of the reasons we staggered those strips. To do this, I use my Lemoyne Star ruler and I'm going to take the ruler and simply place the edge of the ruler up against the raw edge of the strip. I'm going to move it back far enough so that when I put another ruler up against there, I'm going to have plenty of extra fabric, but I'm going to be able to then trim and get a nice true 45 degree cut for my starting cut because my next round of cutting is going to be all based on that 45 degree line. Now that's how you would do this if you were right-handed, but if you are left-handed, slightly different, you're going to take your pair and you're actually going to flip them over so that your A strip is on the bottom, your B strip is on the top, your seam should still be nestled, but then what you're going to do is put the Lemoyne Star ruler on there like this. I've lined up the edge of the ruler with the seam line that I've sewn. Take my additional ruler put it up against what I've just, my Lemoyne Star ruler, remove that, and now I'm ready to cut as if I were left-handed. That 45 degree is going to get you started, and then we're going to go from there. Once you've made that first 45 degree angled cut, you're going to proceed to work your way down through the strips, cutting additional 45 degree angles. Those cuts are going to be measured to be exactly the same size as the size of your diamond strip. So if your diamond strips were two inches, when you place your ruler on there and you make your additional cuts, those cuts are going to be made exactly two inches away. You'll need at least four of them to be able to make one block, but usually what I do is end up cutting up my entire strip. Now, once the 45 degree cuts are made, you're going to come back and you're going to locate the tip of the diamond. You're going to make another cut, a second cut, going north to south from the tip of that diamond. You're not measuring anything. You're, not, you're simply making a, a cut that's going to give you some triangles that are going to be part of the sewing process. This is easy, this second cut, if you happen to be right-handed. But for those of you who had your units and are cutting left-handed, your pieces look like this. It's very difficult to find the tip of that red diamond point. So what I want you to do, if you are left-handed, make your cuts going this direction, left-handed. But when you make your next round of cuts, what I want you to do is flip your pieces over so that they look as if they were cut from a right-hander. And then as a right-hander, you can simply take your cutter and cut this way but if you happen to be left-handed, move your ruler over like this. I usually am looking at something down here to keep it nice and straight. Take your left hand, let me see if I can do this, and actually cut in this direction with your left hand. So it's easy to do, but lefties, you're going to have to flip your strips over when you do it. Okay, now all your pieces are cut. We're going to start to arrange them to be able to go back to our sewing machine and stitch them together. This is what it looks like when you're done cutting. What I do is I take my different units and I'm going to open them up so that they're right side up and you're going to be able to see right away what's happening. All of my 45 degree angle cuts are going to look like this. Those extra triangles that I cut out, I'm going to be able to separate those and you can kind of see what's going to happen in the next step. When we go back to our sewing machine, we're going to be able to start to stitch these pieces together with this triangle being added to here, this triangle being added to this section over here. This is what it will look like. When you position the triangle, just basically position it so that it's in the center. Again, you don't have to worry about lining up any edges, any, you don't have to pull out any pins and do any pinning. What you're simply going to do is basically center the triangle over top of the diamond unit and proceed to stitch them 
through your sewing machine. Keep them together as a unit for when you go to your pressing area. When you do the pieces that came from the A strip, you're going to do the same thing. Put the triangle on top and basically center the triangle over top of the diamond section and proceed to stitch with your good quarter of an inch seams. Again, keep the units together, like units together, so that when you go to do your pressing, you're only going to have to think about it once and then all of the other pieces will follow right in line. So let's head over to our ironing board. When you get to your ironing board, you're going to set your strips up like this. These are the units that came from the A portion of your strip pairs. You're going to set them up so that the diamonds, the star points are on the top and you're going to set your seams with your iron and actually press the seams then so that they are going toward the diamond. What you'll notice when you, when you are doing this at your own ironing station is that both of the seams, this seam and this seam, are both going in the same direction. When you go to use the other units, these, were came, these came from the B strip, and you go to your ironing board, you want to position these so that the triangles are on top, so that you can go with your iron and press the seams toward the triangles. What that will result in is a unit that has both of their seams going in the same direction. This seam is going this way, this seam is going this way. It's going to actually result in both of your units, all of their seams, nesting for the entire rest of the project. So it's important to get this step right. Once we have our pieces pressed, we're ready to take those pieces to our cutting mat to actually trim away the little bit of extra fabric that's been built in so that when we go to piece it, our diamonds will be exactly the right size.